If you already have an animal or plant with all the characteristics you want, then it would be ideal just to make loads and loads of identical copies of it. That is what cloning is, making genetically identical copies of organisms. Cloning animals is a lot harder than plants. You can't just chop off a bit of it, plant it in some soil and it will grow into a clone. Plants have very special areas called meristems of, uh, which allow them to do that, which are full of stem cells. Uh, animals don't have that. They grow very differently. And it took scientists a bit of time, but in 1996, a sheep called Dolly was the first mammal cloned from an adult cell. The reason, if you want to know why they were called Dolly, was actually, it's a bit of a bad joke by the scientists involved, but it was cloned from a udder cell, um, which, is a type, which is essentially a mammary gland, and a very well-known country singer, Dolly Parton, has particularly large mammary glands. So they named the sheep Dolly, because it came from a mammary gland cell. Anyway, Dolly the sheep, how was Dolly cloned? Well, first a normal adult cell was taken from sheep one, from the udder of sheep one that they wanted to clone. So this was a normal cell with the full number of chromosomes in it, a typical adult cell, just like me taking one of your skin cells, let's say, okay? Now, the DNA was extracted from that cell because that DNA has the genome in it for that sheep, and that is the entire genetic code needed to clone that sheep. Now a completely separate sheep, sheep number two, was taken and an egg cell was taken out of that sheep. Now egg cells have the ability to multiply and grow and, and form an embryo. So they're very, very important. But you don't want the DNA from that sheep. So that egg cell had its nucleus removed. We call it being enucleated. And the nucleus from sheep one was then put in to nucleus from sheep two. Using electricity, the egg cell is then stimulated to start dividing into an embryo. And then that implanted embryo gets put into a surrogate sheep. It could be a, it's a completely different sheep to sheep one and sheep two. So we've now got a, sh a third sheep involved. And after a while, the, the uh, embryo grows and the sheep gives birth. And when it gives birth, it gives birth to a clone of sheep one, because the only DNA involved in the whole process in the, was taken from that initial adult cell of sheep one. Now that process could be done in exactly the same way with a human, potentially. It hasn't been done, um, but there's no reason why that method wouldn't work in a human as well. Now, scientists have genetically engineered sheep so that they make medicines for humans in their milk. It's amazing. These uh, medicines can treat things like cystic fibrosis and uh, multiple sclerosis and potentially types of cancer. Um, and the medicines usually come in the form of proteins in the milk, such as antibodies. But when you genetically engineer a sheep and you breed from that sheep, then that although that genes you've put in won't necessarily get passed on to the next generation, they might not get passed on at all, or half the next generation of males are not gonna produce any milk anyway. But if you could clone that amazing sheep that you've made, then you can make loads and loads of copies of that sheep, which you've spent a lot of time and money engineering perfectly, then you can mass produce some of these medicines really, really well. It's also hoped that in the future, we could use the cloned animals to produce whole human organs, such as kidneys, hearts, and livers, which could be used for human transplants. So cloning potentially has some really, really important uses in treating diseases.